I posed a question in the title of my video yesterday. No one saw fit to answer it, I guess, because I just sort of, it looked like it was a rhetorical question. I'll ask it again. Who decides if I am a victim? Does somebody else get to overrule my view of myself and say that I'm a victim, whether or not I want to be? Um, I would say that a lot of the people, well, almost all the people who survived horrible calamities like Auschwitz or Democratic Kampuchea or um, some of the worst atrocities of the breakup of the former, former Yugoslavia, things like that, Rwanda, take your pick. A lot of those people were destroyed by that, by those events, even though they survived them, even though they were physically unscathed. They probably were done in by the whole thing. I'd probably say most people who experienced it. Um, but some people um, don't seem to have gone that way. Um, as I said, I vacationed for quite a while, um, almost amounting to moving to Budapest, Hungary in 1992. And I stayed in a, a homestay with an elderly Jewish woman who had the tattoos on her arm. Uh, she'd been in some camp or other. Um, and uh, she was just the stereotypical bubbly Jewish grandmother. Um, she wanted to spoil me when I was staying there. I was a younger man. I was about 25. I was uh, prone to partying. I'd come home at all hours drunk, and she thought that was the funniest thing she'd ever seen, because, you know, oh, you young men, you have to go out and live large, and, you know, this sort of thing. And because I was even, even though I was a living kind of a riotous life, I was always very respectful of her, even if I was hammered out of my tree. Um, and, uh, you know, some people find that charming, I guess, when a drunk's trying to be nice. But the, the point is, she just, she had so much life in her. Um, she would stay up late waiting for me to come home, etc. And once I was home in bed, fine, she felt it was time for her to go to bed because I was okay. Um, <clears throat> very old world sort of grandmotherly thing. Um, I also know somebody who lived through the Rwandan genocide. And she is like this activist for refugees. She's really into things... Uh, into her community, the Rwandan community, and this sort of thing, with just a person who's just full of drive and energy and, you know, good dealings, etc. After what she'd, she'd been through, she's been through, you'd, you'd think she would be the opposite, right? It's just like, oh, no, I've just seen too much of, of, too many horrors, too many skulls sort of bleaching in the hot African sun, um, uh, too much of what was explored in uh, apocalypse now or in uh, the killing fields these movies about the horrors that sort of I won't say they, they were spawned by the Vietnam War but they were sort of effects of it um, you know, Walter Kurtz was apparently driven completely over into the dark side by his experiences in, in Vietnam but other people are not What's the difference? Um, we say, you know, in, in the Star Trek mythos, or Star Wars mythos, rather, Darth Vader succumbed to the dark side. Why doesn't everybody succumb to the dark side? Um, <clears throat> dark side. I would say that human agency is involved our desire to actually not so much withstand the horrors of existence, but to perhaps use them, to contain them, and make use them to make us stronger. A nuclear reaction, well, you get Hiroshima if you're not careful. Um, but if you can control it, and it's bloody hard to control it, you can use it as energy. Uh, anybody who does Hatha Yoga will understand the value of pain. If you're in control of the amount of pain that you're feeling, you can sort of intuit your way through a damaged or strained or otherwise sore muscle. You can go deeper and deeper into it, mentally speaking, when you're breathing and everything, to try and fix it, to try and 
slowly get it to loosen up a bit. Now you have to wade through a lot of pain, but pain is a beacon in that case. It's saying here's where the damage is. When, when you approach this damaged muscle, like for me, it's here. I have my rotator cuff, cuff is kind of messed up. And if you understand how yoga works, you have to breathe into your muscles. Now, it's, you can't explain how you breathe into a muscle, but it's basically just you're intuiting your whole sort of concentration into the muscle while you're concentrating strongly on the rhythm of your breath. You're trying to sort of understand what it means for your mind or your will or your agency to, to control a muscle. Per science, the brain controls all the muscles. All right, so what you're trying to do is you're trying to concentrate all of the power of your brain on a muscle inside your body. How do you do that? It's not easy. How do you move any of your muscles? How do I know? I, I, I decide I move my hand and my hand just moves. So there's pain involved. So you have to intuit your way into the pain. You have to intuit your way into where the damage is or where the problem is. The pain is useful. It's very useful because it points out exactly where the damage is. Now, I'm not saying that pain is there in order to advise us of where the damage is. I don't think pain works like that at all. Um, but pain does cluster around damage, almost always. At least physical pain. So, I can use the pain in my body as a sort of guide to find out where the damage is. If I approach the pain, as it were, carefully inside my own body, I can slowly, slowly, slowly release or contract the muscle in such a way as to deal with the damage. But I need pain to see where the damage is. You take pain as just a neutral thing. You say, okay, what? there's pain in my body. How can I use it to fix my body, to invoke my agency? Rather than sort of go, ah, oh, pain, I shouldn't feel this pain. This is terrible. I don't want to feel this pain. I don't want to feel this pain, which is the normal human reaction, if you ask me. You sort of go, oh, okay, this pain is telling me something. This pain is um, allowing me to understand my body more, to understand and in, in the end, fix it. I can't fix myself unless I know where I'm broken, and the best way to find out where you're broken is, broken is to follow where the pain is. <clears throat> I'm not saying that this makes pain good, pain just is. But it's, like anything else, it has many facets. And I can use the pain, or I can allow the pain to abuse me. Now that's just a very obvious example of working with pain in your life. Um, most people, I would say, just don't have the desire to do that, and that's the end of it. But it is a question of desire, isn't it? Do you want to get better or not? What do you want? Do you want to sort of give in and sort of say, all right, I can finally say I've been checkmated by existence, and it's time for me to just lay here in a stricken state until I die? Or I can say, I'm under enormous pain. What is that pain telling me? Remember, it's not that there's any moral angle to this. It's just, there is enormous pain. Now what do I do? Um, <clears throat> again, I'm not prescribing this for anybody. I'm just saying that it can be done. Maybe one in 10,000 people can walk out of Auschwitz thinking, yep, glad I got through that. Now, time to get on with life. Um, but it is possible. Um, what is the point the tipping point, or what is the deciding factor, I guess, between being destroyed by a terrible calamity or enormous pain, or being strengthened by it. If it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger, kind of, there's a bit of a cliche here. Um, but there's a lot of things involved in it making you stronger, and one of them, I would say, is the will. The will sees the pain and says, what do I make of this? Well, most people's wills say, get away from it. 
flight. Others will say fight. So you dig your heels in, you clench your jaw, and you just sit there and you try and endure the pain. Uh, that's the traditional Catholic way to do it. Others will say, ah, enormous pain. Okay. What is it? What's that telling me? If anything, is this pointing in anything out? What can I do with this? Okay, yeah, it feels horrible, but can the energy involved in this pain, and pain is an enormously energizing thing, can I use the energy in, in inherent in feeling this enormous pain to my advantage? Will. I want to sort of be in control of that pain, as opposed to it being in control of me. Not easy. With sufficient will, I believe that it is possible to use it in the same way as one can use, say, the controlled explosion in an internal combustion engine. Um, an explosion isn't good. It blows things apart. But if you construct a device whereby you can have a controlled explosion on the inside, you've got something extremely dis destructive used towards a very constructive purpose. Or at least, at least a purpose that you can decide um, what to use on. <clears throat> so again, victimhood is a sense of, it's a reaction to perceived or real calamities. This is horrible, this shouldn't be happening to me. Okay, there you go, there's one way to look at it. Perfectly legitimate. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with being a victim. I don't want to be a victim, but I'm not telling anyone else what they should or shouldn't do. Um, I'm saying, I'm talking about me here. Who decides, after all these calamities I've endured, whether or not I am a victim? Me, 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 here. Not, not in general. Not a hypothetical thing. Just imagine that, um, I don't know, a bunch of Roman soldiers break into my house right now. Uh, drag me out into my arm and yard and nail me to a cross, okay? I've just been crucified. Um, okay, that has happened. At the end of the day, who decides that I am a victim of this? Never mind in general. Who gets to get into my head and tell me, you are a victim. And, and not only that, who gets to overrule my view of my own situation? Can anybody do that? I don't think so. Um, I'm not saying this is easy. It's not just a question of switching your point of view. This has to be worked at, and I would say worked at constantly, more or less one's entire life. Um... Who makes the call? Who gets to decide? Now, now, nowadays we say that it's kind of public opinion or a judge and jury decides. That's all very well for externals or legal uh, definitions or stuff like that when you're attempting to manage a group of people, which is society. I'm saying in the fundamental psychological sense, in terms of my own mentality, my view of myself and my place in the cosmos, who gets to decide if I... Anakantavad, Andy, who gets to decide if I am a victim? Can someone else overrule me on that score, in other words?